In 1892, the British brought a treaty to the Oba of Benin to sign. The events that transpired after the introduction of this treaty resulted in the British punitive expedition against Benin in 1897. Five years after the signing of the treaty by the Oba of Benin, some British officials headed by Captain James Phillips departed England to Benin to reprimand the Oba for breaking the principles of the treaty. The chaos that unfolded during the trip of Captain Phillips' group only exacerbated tensions and the conquest of Benin by Britain. Phillips and his men planned the visit to Benin during the Igwe festival. Despite being one of the tradition and intricacies of the Igwe festival that prohibited the Oba from receiving foreign visitors at that time, Phillips ignored the repeated advice of the Benin authorities to reschedule his visit. At that time, the Benin officials were suspicious of their visit. A group of Benin chiefs took into account the fact that just three years earlier, the same British officials from the Niger Coast Protectorate had declared war against Nana Olumu, the Shekiri chief on the Benin River, who had been friendly to the Benin people. Consequently, the nine British officials led by Captain Phillips were ambushed by the Benin chiefs at Ugbine village as they walked from Uwaton to West Benin City on January 4, 1897. Two white officers escaped the ambush, found their way back to the Benin River and eventually returned to England. Immediately after the Ugbine massacre, the authorities in Benin realized that the stage was already set for a war between Great Britain and the Great Benin Kingdom. The heart of the matter was whether the chiefs had deliberately killed the British officials in order to impede their chances of invading their kingdom. Could the Benin chief have used a different approach to curtail the mobility of the British officials into Benin? It is important to note that Oba Ovorame did not authorize his chiefs to attack and kill British officials. He was not cognizant of the operation. The Benin authorities carried out the operation in defense of the land without seeking permission from the king. The British people were outraged over the massacre of their officials in Benin. According to Oba Eridiawa, the Bini people and Oba Ovorame were depicted as blood-tasting savages in newspapers in Britain. This led to the British punitive expedition against Benin in 1897. Benin was invaded, which led to the death of many Benin warriors. The British troops set the Oba's palace ablaze and looted thousands of Benin artifacts in the palace. Oba Ovorame, who was innocent of the killings of the white men, was exiled to Calabar with his two wives, some of his children, and a few chiefs. Some of the chiefs who went to Calabar with the king were tried and executed for the murder of British officials. It is important to know that during the amalgamation of Nigeria in 1914, many of these territories were already under the authority of the British colonists. The people did not resist the British because at that time, the British had already weakened the power of the region by deposing their powerful kings. Jaja of Okobo was deported to West Indies. He died on his way back to Nigeria. Some people said the British poisoned him when he was returning back to Nigeria. Nana Olumu of the Shekiri land was deported to Ghana. Oba Ovorame of the Benin Kingdom was deported to Calabar. The Oba actually joined his ancestors the same year that Nigeria was amalgamated. The introduction of treaty system to African nobles by the British in the 19th century gave rise to the conquest of territories and the deportation of some powerful African kings. The crisis at that time created a vacuum in the system that led to the amalgamation and creation of Nigeria by Britain in 1914. After the dethronement of some notable African rulers, 
the creation of Nigeria became inevitable. So I will stop here for now. Next time I will come back to discuss about the Northern and Southern Protectorates. Okay, so if you want to read more about the creation of Nigeria, check my first book titled Great Benin, the Alcazar of Postcolonial Culture. It's available on Amazon. All right, so thank you all for watching and bye for now.